Well, when I went in Beale Street the first, I thought there wasn't another street like it. But of course, as year, 48 years a long time. And then we hadn't, a, we hadn't a good landlord, he wouldn't do anything. And it's rained in the window all them years. Yeah, they had lots of character. They were filthy and dirty. That's what interested me about them, because they were so horrible, you know. The, the wood's been in that long, it's worm -eaten. You can get all of it in your hands and you can just crumple it up. You really can crumple it up. I've heard, of, you've, I've heard of cases of people with the old lion beds. They've been moving the bed from one part of the room to the other and it's gone through the floor. Well, they were really decrepit. They, they were really redundant. They were falling down. If it hadn't been for wallpaper, they'd have fell down some of them and they'd have been stuck up with paste. To the outsider, it was a dump. But to us, it was home. I was married from there. My mother lived there. My father. The children were born there. So there's lots of things you're leaving behind. It's like something you've loved that's being hurt. And they were telling me yesterday that that man hasn't gone out to pay a seat and they're starting today to take the roof off. He's stupid, though. He is stupid, he is stupid. But they he will knows put the he'll on. have to go. They will put his roof on. Yes. Well, that woman, uh, was telling me, she's down, it's a woman, this, and she wouldn't go. They took her roof off and she stopped him. Never did. And uh, then the neighbours, what were left, turned on her. Yes, yes. And they said, uh, you have no right to do it, you'll have to go. Yes, oh yes, they'll have to go. She said, well, where will I go? She said, well, they put your big chair in the street. <laughs> you can sit there. Well, but, I mean... But I they, took her, being... they took her roof off. Yeah. I think people are being stupid on it. There's They're no good. sense in it, They're you can't fight. Oh, no, you can't find the council, no. You're only an odd one. That's right,
say simply what brought me to this place, it is this fact that I felt really angry when I saw the conditions under which people were living. Having seen new towns built in the south of England, which um, included the creation of good working conditions, good home conditions, plenty of recreational facilities, and you see the standards which people enjoy in those places, you know, one could only feel distressed and, uh, and really angry about the conditions under which people live in these older industrial communities. Now, th this is infuriating. You walk around the streets and the courts and you see th the degrading conditions that human beings have to live in. And, and you, you, you can't help inside you but say, you know, we, we've got to do something about this. There are enormous problems, many of them technical ones, of course. Mine, um, my part of these problems relates to flesh and blood and people's feelings. My difficulty when we tell people that uh, they're about to be moved, they seem to suddenly realise that they're not so badly off where they are. Because I, I really like where I am. I mean, they're only like cottages, but you can keep them nice. And I think they shouldn't disturb people when they're getting up. Well, there's a lot of people gone that's over 70 and 80. Well, they can't be the same again. I don't know. But I don't agree with what they're doing. No. Well, actually, I felt horrible. I kept going out every five minutes, you know, thinking, are they doing me now? Are they doing my house now? Anyway, we had to wait quite a while. But when the boys did bring the bulldozer in. They came over to the house I was living in. They said, Nellie, she's going down now. Well, honestly, I stood at the top of the street and scratched. So when they come and told me the houses was coming down, I took no notice. I took not a bit of notice. The people were getting scared round about. I said, stake no notice. Don't bother. You'll be all right. They won't come down yet. So anyway, time went on when the policeman came and brought the bills round. That was the final notice. So uh, I says, uh, well, how long have we to be, love? He says, well, he says, about July, I think that will be the time. So I says, oh, all right. He says, and if they don't go be then? I says, could we get in trouble? He says, yes. He says, we could come at a minute's notice and tell you to go. I said, oh, I don't want that. So when we had to go, and the time came, I was very, very sorry. Very sorry and very sad. Yes, they're pulling the floorboards out and taking the tops off. And then uh, not only that, they're breaking in them. As soon as a person goes out, they're breaking in them and taking all the lead pipes and everything out. Well, it's not so pleasant living amongst that, is it? The people next door, before they flitted, they brought the back door open while they were in bed. They didn't know that the next morning to come down. They didn't get in. They took it off the hinges, though. The next morning, when they come down, they find the door off the hinges. What I'd like to do is somebody to give me a load of bricks and a load of mortar, and I'd like to build myself a flipping house and show them how it's done. I don't believe that any architect or, or, or planner in this situation can do his job properly unless he has a regard for the objectives. These objectives are, as we have simply said, a total and complete increase in human capacity and enjoyment of the faculties presented to human beings by the Almighty. Uncle John, and you got the misery, but he has a lot of fun, oh, baby. Yeah. Why do you like Oldham particularly, though, Turner? Because I've lived here for so long. Is that the only reason? No, and because I like Oldham as a town. It's got tons of character, you know. There's... 
Well, what does everybody think in Oldham, seeing as everybody's going to stay here for the rest of their lives and finish up as doddering old people walking along? <laughs> oh, 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 anyway, well, you was everybody? You get well, not in Oldham. <laughs> you don't finish it up as a doddering old person if you adjust yourself. You know, most people in Oldham have got moss going all over them because they've lived here for so long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is, you just sort of get I'm apathetic to us, like, the rest of the world, like... <laughs> you could enjoy all them if you kept away for a short time and then came back, say, a year or two, and then came back. Save us. No, it's a dirty, grimy hole. You can't touch any... Well, I can't. I'm not anybody else, but you can't touch anything in all them without getting filthy. Right. For a start, yes. it's got too many milchin. Do you realise that nearly all the milchinries in all them are not used anymore? Uh, we worked that half-time till we were 13. Then we went full-time. And we started at six o'clock, early morning. Of course, things have changed now, haven't they? Far the better. You wouldn't like your family to have to do that, but that's the way it was then. I feel very sad about it. I think it looks sort of little big bombs at it. You know, little houses in between with people still living in them. It's really sad to see them pulled down. You know, because. They are Oldham, these old houses. They are the real Oldham. You know, all the dirty mills and chimneys. And... It's not really what it's made out to be. You know, the North, it's not all industry and clogs and shawls and cobble streets. It's growing and supposedly got houses have got to go down to grow with it. Which is a shame, really. If I had my way, I'd leave one house standing, just one little house standing. People could say, oh, that's a good old house, there, you know. People have worked and lived in there. When they came, when they gave me my notice, a fortnight's notice, I just felt as though I was sentenced. And uh, anyway, I was 13 week, and I never eat and I slept all the time. And what is it you're after? Where do you want to be rehoused? The one bedroom flat? No, well, if I, if I am to climb stairs. No, there's no stairs to climb. They're all on one level. There's living room, yes. bedroom, Bathroom and toilet and a kitchen. Oh, heartbreak. I spent an entire Saturday weeping. But as time went on, and the things that were happening around us, I was glad to go. St Mary's Ward. Oh, yes. Top, Top priority. priority. Yes. We've got to push 500 houses up there in the next 12 months. <laughs> and we haven't got the site cleared yet. I think little old them's gone. Yeah. Yes, I do. Won't be the same. Oh, no, won't be the same, love. No, it won't be the same. If you saw me standing Squares here, yes. and they all represent 50, 60 properties. Yes. Which could be demolished, but for uh, one or two families in each area who are not yet moved. What name is it, please? Palmer. And your husband's first name? Robert. And your first name? Vivian. And the address is 52, 52. Whiteley Street. Is it your own house, or are you under a landlord? Oh, we're under a landlord. We rent it. And what rent do you pay? Fifteen and eleven. Well, I mean, you can put me in my route. You can put us on a desert anywhere, really, and, I mean, we'd make home out of the desert. Because there's a lot of you, you see, but one on their own can't, can they? 
that's in the... Well, they should be moving fairly soon, so that's two blocks they can be dealing with. There are old people in these places, will tell you, of people sleeping free in a bed, three beds in a room, in some cases, in two-bedroom houses, because that's all they mainly consist of. And they've lived without hot water, without running water, without lavatory accommodation, and they still do. So I don't know where we'll land. We'll land somewhere. Oh, well, let's hope and pray that you get where you can fare. <laughs> I think uh, we're born a little bit too soon. I think in the next three or four generations, things will be a lot brighter. Providing somebody doesn't go mad and press that flipping button. Friends at the canteen and customers have made you a little farewell present. A canteen of cutlery and uh, a fruit set. Oh, nice. Now, it's just an esteem for our uh, thoughts of yours when you're going away. Of course, we know you're not going away yet, but eventually we'll have to do. And it's just oh, an esteem wonderful. that we think about you. Very nice Very indeed. Nice. sorry to say, but it is. And I'd like to thank you all for your custom in the past. And when I leave here, I'm leaving with some happy memories of y'all. But there's one thing I'd like to say, that I wish you all happiness in your new homes, wherever you go. Good luck. Good health, and God bless all of you.
I mean, what, what are we trying to do for these people? You can give them nice sanitary conditions with washing facilities and bathrooms, but you need give them no better condition than perhaps a battery hen has in being removed from a, a field and being provided with food and water. There is a far greater a process of, of, um, of social improvement. And to get social improvement, there is no doubt that you've got to improve the physical, and the con physical conditions first and foremost. You very happy about it and I wouldn't like to go back and nobody wanted to leave less than I did. I felt like a matchboxes. They do, they're just horrible looking. They're... I mean, what, what are we trying to do for these people? You can give them nice sanitary conditions with washing facilities and bathrooms, but you need give them no better condition than perhaps a battery hen has in being removed from a, a field and being provided with food and water. There is a far greater a process of, of, um, of social improvement. And to get social improvement, there is no doubt that you've got to improve the physical, the physical conditions first and foremost. You marvellous. I'm really very happy about it and I wouldn't like to go back and nobody wanted to leave less than I did. I felt like a matchboxes. They do, they're just horrible looking. They, they just look like the old houses. You know, just from the front they're doing small windows and everything. I think it's lovely because we really have what we've never had before. For a bath and a toilet inside. So what more can we want? It ought to have been a few years since, and then it's been much better. Everything, everything that you buy for this new house is much more appreciated than in the old house. I mean, you can spend money forever on an old house. You'll never make it any different, but the house that we're living in now looks nice from outside. It's nice inside. So therefore, if you spend money on it, it looks much better. Uh, the old house is the sight of the, another part of the person like a piece of furniture or clothes or anything. They are part of you. Not quite as much. These new houses aren't as much part of you yet. I suppose they will be in time, but not just now. Well, I think it's great. Just everything about it, you know, the whole aspect of the thing in general, the position of the house, hot and cold running water, being able to fetch children up in decent surroundings and each with a bedroom of their own, you know. I mean, they've never had these things before. Of course, we never had them ourselves when we were children, did we? He, Tom, they've taken the old houses down. Don't know what's happening in this old town. They say we're going down fit and ill. He, by gum, I'll be darned if I will. Well, I don't know, chum, it must be all right. Just think of it, lad, when it comes to bath night. Turn on the tap and put in the plug instead of the tin bath we planked on the rug. So welcome the changes and think of it please. Must be grand to see flowers and lots of green trees. Got a garden there? 
Yeah, frog garden. Not the back. Yeah, not the grass. Ooh, we have rhubarb. We don't need to buy no rhubarb, don't you? My old house. It had four rooms before it met its doom. The windows were small and few. They never let the sun shine through. Now all that is left is a heap of rubble. My old house has vanished just like burst bubble. I mean, as you all know, they are uh, taking all the houses down, all the pubs down, and one thing and another, aren't they all over the place? Now, uh, I heard about a gentleman went in a public house, you know, and uh, he said, by Joe, he said, this is smart. He said, it's different altogether. He said, just I like it, Joe. He said, I, he said, I like it. He said, I like it, champion. He says, but I missed out spittoons. <laughs> He says, don't they worry, they never used to hit them. <laughs> yeah, you know, one night everybody was so desperate, you know, we'd all been having arguments with his parents and I'd been told to get my hair cut. My friend was down here, he'd been told to get his hair cut. And um, my friend was just sick of his other friends, sick of his parents, and we all decided, come on, let's go and get a red spot in Anguilla, a pudding basin, set off around the world, you know. Anyway, after about 10 minutes, it wore off us. <laughs> you know, we're already all set for working his way around the world. It seems silly now when you look back on it, but then it was fabulous, idea, you know, new adventures and everything. Billy, he's the stage one, he sort of put us off it, but me and Jim were all ready for going, you know. Personally, I'd like to get out of them for a short time, but I'll definitely come back. You see, they took more notice of the parents than what they do now, you see. They honoured the parents. It tells you that fifth commandment, honour thy father and thy mother. Well, we did that. And when we got a word off our father, we knew what it was and we were told. He never lifted his hand to us, he'd no need. And I remember when I was growing up, quite a young lady. We used to come in and he used to say, can you see that clock, child? I said, Rudy used to talk. Can you see that clock? I said, yes, father. He would say, well, you know the time. If you want anything to eat, get it, and you know what to do. I said, yes, father. And that were all he said. Good night. Good night, love. And that were all. We just sort of walk along in the park, you mind his own sweet little business. And about five of these leather jacketed kinky lads came up from behind this tent and showed corners mud and everything, so we turned around and told them it's two minutes to go, you know. Anyway, they came chasing us. And all of a sudden, all around these marquees, thousands more of us. Anyway, one got hold of me and threw me over some railings. I got suffered a scratch on my chest and it ripped my shirt. I was very displeased about that. Mods don't seem to start anything probably because I'm a pseudo murder said this, but they, they don't seem to want trouble. It's the rockers who give it them. I don't see why we can't live in peace, you know. Sign a Geneva Convention and lay down rules and stuff like that, you know. No beating mods up between 11 and 12 at night and stuff like that. I think they're more adventurous than we were. The young people nowadays. They take greater risks than we would take. And I admire them for it. They're the same underneath. They might dress differently, but they're, they're all right. I saw Uncle John with long, tall salad. Saw Mary coming any day back in the alley. Well, baby, yes, baby. Well, baby, you have a new son for the night one more time. So let's be, let's be modern, let's be nice. And start all over again. Because, I mean, some of us are not too old to start a fresh life somewhere else. You don't want to do it, but you have it to do, haven't you? They lose that stigma of, of cotton people and having ball heads and nappa knees and don't go in out them, they're all ball heads and nappa knees and all that. I can remember when I were working at first, you had to nail ten your jacket on and you used to have to sit on the floor and have your lunch. 
take a pot pot with you. Look if you got a hot water to brew. But as I say, them days have gone away all for good. The day of my life went past without everybody said good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Good morning. I didn't know the word. I used to say good morning, love. The mill at the crossway now, the mill, all them road walk, they go to and fro, and they never pass. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Hello. Well, it's kind. And it's something to left for love. This friendliness of the slums that we've sometimes heard about is probably nothing more than a means of, uh, of assuring, in fact, that you don't commit murder ten times a day because of the very close and unsatisfactory conditions into which you're forced to exist, cheek by jowl with other people living in the same condition. I think that um, Oldham must uh, renew itself or bring itself up to date or it could perish. I mean to say, I'd like to see it in 50 years from now, but I won't be around. But uh, I think it'll be a grand place, yes. I think it'll be uh, another garden city, my idea. I don't want to stay in Oldham for the rest of my life. I want to get out and see things you know, before I get sent out on Moss Grove Zombie. But well, I'd like to come back in Oldham and settle down in Oldham, really, because I've lived here all my life and it's just sort of part of me, you know. I was talking to a Rochdale fellow one day and we was arguing which had the most rain. I said, well, you can be quiet, I said, because Oldham, they call Oldham the urine pot of the north. He said, no, you've got it wrong, Rochdale. I said, well, it might be Rochdale, but they empty it in Oldham. I would stay in Oldham. I've had offers to go out of the country, out of the town when I was younger. I'd like to be able to go on watching all the athletic at Boundary Park. Because I've tried to ensure that that carries on. I've left it in my will that uh, they cremate me and scatter me ashes at penalty area at Cheddar and Road End. I was in CND for about two years and I left and started an offspring group called VATB, which is Violence Against the Bomb. But it didn't get very far because they couldn't find enough militant people, you know. Um, so I scrapped it. I, I believe it's still going. I've been quite a few left-wing groups, but... The fact that lives in Battle, you know, you've got to leave it up to the older people. We can't really do much at our age. What's good at thinking about what you can't have? I never want anything, only just what I know I can have, because what's the good of wishing for the moon? You can't have it, you can't have it, can you? Sure. Make me angry. Anything else? Sure. Apathy, I think, makes me angry. People not caring about anything whatsoever, you know. I suppose I'm apathetic, but I don't get angry towards myself. I care about certain, some things, you know, but if you just sort of ask somebody a question, oh, I couldn't care, I'm not bothered, it just makes me angry. Because if you're not going to be interested, at least a little bit, in what's going on, might as well just stick around the gas oven, put a shilling in the meter and end it, you know, because you're not going to get anywhere. Well, I believe in this. Never see anybody skint if you have any money in your pocket. Never see anybody without a butty, as we call it, in this town. 
and you never want for a butter yourself. I have some nice memories around there, love. Everybody were a good, happy people. Loving people. I don't think you'd find any better anywhere. Happy memories. I've seen them children brought up in Yon Street. And I used to sit on that chair to get door. And I've watched them dance. Well, you, a boy used to come in, one of them, concertinas. And I used to watch them dance. And they were happy. But uh, I'm very sorry to miss all the people that's gone. And I know in time they'd have to come down because I, they're a good age. But it's missing all the people. And if they go there and they find the happiness of the dad there, and the kind people, they won't be bad. It's a shame, really. If I had my way, I'd leave one house standing, just one little house standing. People could say, oh, that's a good old house. Uh, you know, people have worked and lived in there. To the outsider, it was a dump. But to us, it was home. Well, I believe in this. Never see anybody skint if you have any money in your pocket. Never see anybody without a butty, as we call it, in this town. And you never want for a butty yourself. I have some nice memories around there, love. Everybody were a good, happy people. Loving people. I don't think you'd find any better anywhere. Happy memories. I've seen them children brought up in Yon Street. And I used to sit on that chair to get door, and I've watched them dance. Well, you, a boy used to come in, one of them, concertinas, and I used to watch them dance, and they were happy. But uh, I'm very sorry to miss all the people that's gone. And I knew in time they'd have to come down, because I, they're a good age. But it's missing all the people. And if they go there, and they find the happiness of the dark.